Merry Christmas everyone and a Happy New Year to all of my fans out there. So we have only a few days left to Christmas and I'm more excited and looking forward to it just as much as I often am on whenever Christmas comes rolling around. The one thing I dislike about Christmas is I know I don't want to bring up bad vibes, especially during the season, is the the Christmas rushing at the last minute when you go shopping. It's it's always a bit of a pain for me because going out there it's like oh, well it's like bustle and hustle and so busy it makes you feel like you well you wishes you wish things would quiet down during the holidays but everyone wants to get in those last Christmas orders before the year is out and of course there's the young times where you have to make sure you have all you know send out all the cards and make sure that everyone is uh, happy about over the holidays and it's difficult to be happy sometimes because when you you're stressed out but again as I said this is just one of the drawbacks about Christmas I don't like very much but the rest of the time I don't I like spending time with my family and I like you know feeling that um, enjoyment that we get to have every so often, you know, spending time with family. So anyway, I'll dive into what we're going to be reviewing today in, in Fangirl Review. As you guys know, this is Sarah Stevenson and this is Fangirl Review. <laughs> Okay guys, let's get into it. So we're going to review a movie I was talking about in my last, my last you know, review, which is called uh, Christmas Prince. And as you guys know or are well aware, this is a bit of a franchise and it has, it kind of um, starts off with um, a girl who's a, a journalist at um, editor who wants to become a, a, a journalist for her mag the magazine she's working at but the lady is a total jerk <laughs> and but she's given her a shot to sort of in review and interview the um, the um, events leading up to a coronation for a king in uh, in Cordelia I think it's called and it deals with a prince who's thinking about either applicating his throne or, or or just become the king, next king, obviously. So we get into the story. The story takes place with a man, uh, Ebony, I should say, who is a, a, a junior editor for a magazine called Upbeat or Beat Now or whatever they call it. And she is running around, you know, doing the odd edit job for lazy journalists who won't give a care about their work. Anyway, so she gets approached by her boss and told about how she is going to be covering the coronation for a king in Cordinia called um, Prince Richard. And he and according to the media circus, he's a playboy prince where he has a secret girlfriends at left and right and there is not much to tell about his private life. So this is a chance for em Ember to actually do a bit of news coverage and get her name leaked to the press, hopefully. She, her friends encourage her to do this and, and all that stuff. She's even encouraged by her father, who's named Rudy, who owns a diner, who is very encouraging and tells her to go and do this. But she has second thoughts because it's leading up to Christmas and she feels like that she's letting her father down by just dropping everything to go work over Christmas. But her father says, go and do this. Get your name out there and stuff like that. And we'll just celebrate Christmas or the New Year, you know, later on, obviously. So she gets to Cordelia and when she gets there, she's about to wave down a taxi. But then, little do we know, a bearded man um, kind of jumps ahead of her and gets into a, her cab before her. And she then has to um, get another cab, and this time she actually meets up with a lot of her other journalists who are there for the same purpose, to record the coronation. And when they get there, the um, press conference is um, just sort of in a kerfuffle, where the um, prince is not there to be interviewed. So 
um, and they're told that there will not be a, um, a, a, schedule, a new scheduled appointment to do the interview. So, of course, Amber raises her hands and says, when can I, we do a one-on-one -on -one interview with the prince? And the, the answer is, the other journalists laugh and think that she's an amateur, yada, yada, yada and tell her, don't quit your day job in, in your being, in your profession. <laughs> Anyway, they then begin to leave, but then Am Amber decides to head back inside the um, castle, and in order to find fo to take photos and and video as her journal as her editor told her to in the first place. So anyway, she, as she's exploring the castle. She again runs into one of their main security people called. Um, I don't remember her name, but uh, she's really strict. I, oh yeah, I think her name is um, Avril, who is not a very nice lady, and she thinks finds out thinks that she's Martha, the uh, a governess for e e Princess Emily of Cordelia, and so Amber plays into this role and pretends to be some Martha, and she also meets the prince, who turns out to be the guy. Who stole her cab and she's like oh no what have I done I just dissed the prince but of course um, he's not this is not important because um, the Queen Queen Helena is annoyed with her son for no reason because he's been out there binding himself instead of facing his responsibilities as part of the royal family of course he um, um, well, he just says that he's just trying to find himself and stuff like that. But of course, the queen doesn't want to hear it, obviously, and thinks that he should take up his responsibilities as the next line in the, in the throne. Anyway, so Emily is then escorted out of the room, and then it's she knocks over a vase, which is funny, <laughs> and then she gets escorted to her room. I think I should mention that she gets she messages her editor telling her about the misunderstanding between the royals. And the editor thinks this is a great opportunity. Go ahead, um, pretend to be um, the governess Martha in, in order to get plenty of one-on-one -on -one time with the prince and get plenty of video, photos and stuff like that so they can put it into the magazine, hopefully. Of course, this is a, she thinks that if they find out about her, she's gonna go and wind up in jail. This is sort of similar to um, Picture, picture perfect royal Christmas movie we just covered just recently where it deals with another girl who pretends or takes over another person's identity to in order to get her work done faster. Okay, so anyway, we also meet um, Duke Simon or Simon who is up for possibly going to be either is the next candidate to be offered the um, throne. And he's not a very nice guy. He's also um, tries to make out that the prince, um, Prince Richard, is n is is not um, an applicant for the throne because he's not really a reliable source. Because he rather ran or run away away from his responsibilities than faced them. While while Simon tries to make out that he's more of a better set for the role. Anyway, so we also so Amber goes to her study session with Princess Emily, and there um, she is having a difficult time because she's not really good at maths, and so she just has to um, they do a bit of writing. And while they're talking, um, Emily says that she feels she remarks that. She feels really bad that she's got this illness that and there's no cure because she is confined to walking around with crutches, so it's kind of sad this scene. But Emma Best tells her that that she doesn't think of her as a poor rich girl, but a poor little brave girl, which I thought was very touching and stuff like that. They later on um, see Prince Richard out in the garden shooting arrows. And Emperor notices how attractive he looks without his goatee. He's really attractive looking. Well, when I first seen him back in the day, I didn't think he was one of my ideal princes or kings or anything like that. 
but now that I've got to know him in the series, he seems pretty good looking. <laughs> anyway, Amber suggests to allow Emily to shoot an arrow. Emily did a good job, and then she hugs her her governess, um, Emma, 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 uh, Amber, to to shoot too. And of course, this is an ongoing bit of a skit in the, the um the I uh, Christmas Prince, where um in this in the series she continues to miss the the target. And it's an ongoing gag. Anyway, she misses and breaks something, breaks a window, and then the group runs off. And later on, um, Ember is invited to a group gathering by Emily, and there they talk about how uh, about the prince. And they also talk about um, they. We also meet um, uh, Melissa, who's uh, possibly a another royal who wants to marry the prince but the big problem is they have a history it seems that melissa has also spread rumors to the tabloids and that caused the prince richard to lose faith in her and just didn't want to have anything to do with her and of course the king prince queen helena invited her down just to mend things and possibly get him to possibly see her as a possible contender to be his next, his queen, his, his wife, obviously. Of course, this doesn't go well in hand, and later on, um, when, let me see what happens, oh yeah, she eventually went, sees them um, playing in the snow, and she continues to distrust em Ember and thinks that she's up to no good. She's not wrong there, obviously. Anyway, later on, um, Emily reveals to um, Ember that she's not what she seems and finds out the truth and, find, and says that she wishes to help Ember to find out the truth about her brother instead of spreading more and more vicious rumours about his, his non-fiction, his fictional gallivanting across, America, across the world, making out he has many girlfriends in many um, war areas. And so anyway, she, em, as they're making Christmas cookies in the kitchen, Emily tells her about how her brother is um, was in love with Melissa, but that was a long time ago, and stuff like that. And things didn't work out. Of course, that makes a lot of sense. We later see um, them attending a special gathering where they're just um, opening a new orphanage, and then we see um, the same one of the journalists approaching. Princess Emily and saying that he wished to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with her and to, and he kind of disses Amber but then the uh, princess says to her tell, tells him if he continues to stay in this country she'll put him in the dungeon this is another funny joke that goes around because because in their kingdom they don't have a dungeon or so it would seem Anyway, we then find Prince Richard playing with some orphan boys, disrupting the whole press conference and the event, obviously. And it's a nice romantic moment where we watch as him playing with a bunch of boys and stuff like that. The Queen is less than thrilled because he's supposed to be there to attend this event. Anyway, later on, he warms up to Amber and then he eventually, um, Amber follows him out to sort of a cabin, I guess, his father's cabin. I should mention, his late father, he often made special ornaments for Christmas um, celebrations, which looks like like miniature teddy bears or bears or elephants. We also find one that looks like in the shape of an acorn. This plays a very key part to this movie, so be keep an eye out. Anyway, soon enough, Amber follows um, Richard into the forest woods and she nearly gets attacked by wolves. But luckily enough, Richard appears and takes her, escorts her to the cabin. There they drink um, some cocoa and discuss how he wishes to not become king. Of course, um, eventually, while he's out of the room, Amber discovers. Uh, adoption papers which indicate that Prince Richard is not really a um, really a blood relative of the royal family but it turns out he's um, 
you know he, that he turns out to be an orphan and he, that is the royals made up a fake birth certificate and stuff like that she, amber tells her friends this and they think this is, will be a great way to get her name noticed in the media more and more amber has second thoughts about it because she thinks being lied to all your life will not make things better because this will not automatically just not allow him to be crowned king this would mean that he all his life well, he, it was a huge lie all his life he thought he was um he was queen helena and and his father late father's son but now he's he's an imposter anyway um she she eventually spots um, Melissa and Richard kissing in the conservatory. The and there, um, but Richard says, "Back off! This is not really happening." He then actually approaches Amber and says that what they had, what he and Melissa had, was in the past, and that the thing that she did was the um, sending stories to the pr leaking stories to the press trying to make herself look popular and stuff like that and it only dragged his name in the mud a bit anyway while they're out walking um, Melissa and her and Simon they discover the adoption papers and they will hope to leak it during the gala you know that will take place before the coronation so anyway as Coronation arrives. Emily decides to invite Amber as a get as a guest to the um, gala, where she gets um, Amber to the full makeover, or as she says, the whole works, the dress, the shoes, the makeup. Oh, technically, Amber doesn't wear heels or anything. She wears sneakers throughout this this um, series which is funny it's an ongoing joke again like this like this entire series there's always a lot of Easter eggs in this in this franchise as you will soon see soon enough Amber appears in this beautiful purple gown and Richard and her dance a bit and then eventually Melissa reveals the horrible truth that Richard is an imposter he was adopted and he's not gonna be the next ruler of the kingdom this upsets richard and it's not only that amber's true identity is revealed that it turns out that she's a journalist not martha the governess and this upsets the royal family big time and then the um uh she's dismissed obviously and richard feels the most hurt because he's he's been deceived not just by Amber, but by his own mother and his own father, who's, well, he's dead, long dead, obviously, but he feels the hurt that none, that not, no one has told him the truth. Anyway, coronation arrives. Simon and Melissa take the opportunity to get married ahead of time, and before the coronation begins, she demands that the mother, the mother, the queen mother, to come there to his to be witness to the coronation. Of while this is happening, Ember is at the airport and where she discusses with her father about what's happened and he says that to not worry and that things will work out, of course. And then Ember has this flash of, you know, flash of um, brilliancy by, by realizing the truth. She quickly gets gets her gear and heads back to the castle where she meets Avril, who says that she wants her gone, of course, but she eventually helps her find the acorn ornament that was on the tree. And we find out that inside the acorn is a decoration of, from the late king. Amber arrives at the coronation before Simon got, gets crowned, and she hands the decoration to the, um, has the, to the queen, and there, it, and King Richard from Prince Richard. There we read that the late king, he, he declared that his, while well, his son, his adopted son, may not be his blood, but he is, um, if he wants, he can choose to take the throne. So this is a royal decree, which means he has the right to become the next king uh, and all that stuff. So 
this is good news and of course both Melissa and Simon object to this thinking that this might be another for a, for a forgery but it turns out it has the king's royal seal on it which means it's a royal decree which means you cannot it's by signed by the reg, the original king the old king and then they well Simon objects tries to make out that he and a bunch of lawyers will will, will try to discredit it but and Miss Melissa tells him, make sure there's one for our divorce. And they are, go off bickering and stuff like that. And while well, Richard gets crowned to become the next king. And Amber sneaks off. And as she sneak at, later on, she presents her story to her editor. And her editor shrugs it off saying, you are girl ground zero. You had the adoption papers right in your hand. And... You didn't go for the cheap and nasty story to tell everyone that he is um, the, um, an adopted son to the ki royal kingdom. And she says that the rest of the story sounds like a pub piece and they're not gonna, it's not going to be seen in the light of the day. Not in their magazine. So Amber then takes her, the opportunity to tell her editor that she quits. That she plans on telling the truth about Richard in her blog. Which she does to us, she tells this to her friends. And then she, as it turns out, by the new year, the blog has reached so many views, meaning it's gone viral, technically. And it's gonna, and eventually, as her friends are about to head out to celebrate the new year, um, Richard appears at, at her father's diner and he wishes her to, to get engaged with her. He presents this beautiful, beautiful ring and tells her that will you marry me. She at first um, doesn't feel like she ought to get engaged because she feels like it's not that she can't. But he tells her that you can come back and forth between my kingdom and here. And, and then this will give them a good time to get to know each other better you know considering that he all this time he's been knowing the governess instead of amber so anyway amber agrees to um to you know the engagement and they kiss cuddle and rudy watches with a proud smile then we fade out now that is one awesome christmas movie i dare say i mean i've seen I know I've seen several cr Prince and Princess Christmas movies out there, but I do think this one's very eye-catching. And I like the fact that, that in the end, um, that after a few, you know, twists, Amber is able, was able to help um, Prince Richard, who soon becomes King Richard, and gets him to be um, the next king. Of course, he becomes... Um, after a bit of time, he does think reconsider becoming the next king because he starts feeling he can do a lot, he can help his community. And as the next story comes along, I won't go into details about that one as of yet, but it's, it's a continuation. It takes place one year later, and in that one year, she, he, they've been dating and seeing each other, going back and forth, you know, long distance relationships, but at the same time, continuing to get to know each other until their bright wedding day approaches by the next Christmas episode movie. So I'll rate this one now for you guys. So I'm gonna rate it, mm, I'm gonna rate it four stars out of five. It's a really good one because I like, the, as I said in the past, I like the closeness and I love the romance. Of course, I do question the whole um, um, how some people would deceive other people to get in order to achieve what they want to ch do. I know that we've seen several movies out the. I mean, I know we often continue going on about the not okay movie a lot, and most people think, oh, that's, that's just that horrible that this girl just went ahead and do this horrible thing. But I like that in the end, Amber was redeemed and that she eventually used her story and told it in her vlog. Uh, I mean, her vlog. I mean, I didn't like how her editor just turned told her story was a puff piece and it was too um, too much schmaltz. That's what the term she used, it, which is, doesn't sound like a real word when I think about it. 
and I like the fact that it's very heartwarming that that she and Richard make up and he considers her likely to be his next to his be his wife and his the the next queen obviously and it's very heartwarming anyway so that's about it for me guys so the next time you may see me will be the new year so I hope you guys enjoyed seeing these see my um this move these movie reviews this year so the next time you see me will be january so i hope i see you guys then to continue our reviews of other movies as we go along and tv series and of course i'll make sure we get some more things other than them princess movies out to you guys so i hope you guys have a good christmas coming up and i hope you guys will have enjoy these reviews all right that's it from me guys so i'll talk to you guys soon in the new year and i hope you guys have a nice merry christmas and a happy new year all right i see you guys in my next review next year so i'll see you guys around bye for now and merry christmas